There is more than a lifetime between these logos. One from today that represents Hanes Brands Incorporated's Hanes line, and this one representing P.H. Haynes Knitting Company just as they started selling underwear under their own name in 1914. But the story of P.H. Haynes Knitting being celebrated with a historic marker on 6th Street between Church and Main doesn't begin with a cotton ball spun into a garment. It begins with tobacco in the 1800s. Here is a field of tobacco. A commodity whose sweet-smelling, enjoyable-tasting smoke has contributed to man's pleasure for centuries. In 1872, at just 27 years old, Pleasant Henderson Haynes and his brothers John Wesley Haynes and Benjamin Franklin Haynes created P.H. Haynes & Company. They specialized in making the oldest form of tobacco, plug tobacco. It's made from the heavier grades of the plant. The tobacco was mixed with a syrup and compressed into a brick-like mass the size of a deck of cards. Pleasant found success in the tobacco industry, producing multiple brands, including one bearing his own nickname, Early Bird. The company supplied tobacco users until 1900 when Pleasant sold the company to R.J. Reynolds. Well, Pleas was never a smoker himself and his wife Mary Lazora Fortune Haynes from Texas was a proud member of the Women's Christian Temperance Union. So she was adamantly opposed to anything like tobacco or alcohol related and in fact this is why he turned down an offer from Asa Candler to be an investor in Coca-Cola because she did not like the cocaine component to Coca-Cola. Now there's a soft drink from the Coca-Cola company that makes it fun to be thirsty. Rosalie Haynes Horton is Pleasant's great-great-granddaughter. So they sat and ruminated and decided upon the underwear business as something that people use every day and that wasn't going to hurt them but in fact help them in daily life. Pleasant Henderson Haynes prepared for the new venture's present and future by sending his 21-year-old son P. Huber Haynes off to work in a textile mill in Mayadan. His job was to learn all he could about the business. And in 1902, Pleasant and his sons created P.H. Haynes Knitting with 50 sewing machines and 12 knitting machines in a building at 6th and Church Streets in downtown Winston-Salem. It went from a partnership to being incorporated in just a year. They had 150 workers and were steadily growing, satisfying men and boys' need for heavyweight knit shirts and underwear for the winter. They created their first union suits, the one-piece underwear, in 1913, but it was a year later before the buying public would hear the name P.H. Haynes Knitting. That's when Pleasant abandoned the model of only supplying products for private labels. They created a modest advertising budget and opened an ad agency in New York City and sold products under the Haynes brand for the first time. This is New York, a miracle city, a city of tall buildings, narrow dark streets, magnificent parks, broad avenues, homes and schools, stores and theaters and palatial hotels. A fascinating city, an incredible city. The commercial, financial, trading, and cultural heart of a great nation, the United States of America. While spending time in the Empire State, Pleasant gained an appreciation for Central Park and the emerging urban park effort that had begun around the country. He brought that effort to Winston-Salem where he donated 50 acres of land to city government for a public park. Haynes Park as a gift commemorating the merger of Winston and Salem in 1913. From 1916 to 1918, the Haynes brand became a significant contributor to the World War I effort in supplying underwear for the U.S. government. They could not provide Haynes branded products for the public during the war, but within a week of the armistice, the company had enough commitments to claim the next 10 months of production. P.H. Haynes Knitting grew with the town. 
It was a growing employer in 1920 when Winston-Salem was the largest city in the state, and under Pleasant's leadership, it grew to more than 5,000 employees. Not only was the company buying millions of dollars in cotton from North Carolina farmers, paying taxes into the community, and sending its leadership to sit on several boards and commissions, both around the city and the state, but it was also generously providing for its employees. The Haynes workforce enjoyed a rich benefit package. P.H. Haynes Knitting paid the full cost of the employee pension plan, no matching requirement for employees. Health care paid. Vacations, holidays, unemployment, and workers' compensation all provided 100% by the company. Because it was the right thing to do. And P.H. Haynes was the opposite of a robber baron and a greed-is-good capitalist. On the contrary, he truly believed that business and industry were first and foremost a public service and that the goal should be to uplift the prosperity of the entire community, line everybody's pockets and not just his own. And that was quite different from the prevailing ethos of the day. So he was not about exploiting the labor force to eke out more profits or compromising the quality of the product ever. And he knew it was better business to have a partnership with labor instead of be, to be antagonistic to them because, frankly, he was so appreciative of all of the hard work. He knew that that's what made the business probably more than he did. So he was always about showing gratitude to the workers and increasing the benefits package as quickly as they could. Pleasant ran the business until his death at 79 years old in 1925. His eldest son, P. Huber Haynes, the one he sent off to work in the textile mills in Mayadan, had been the vice president and general manager. His experience in the mill was key in his years of leadership from 1925 to 1956. During his time, P.H. Haynes Knitting continued to sell to the U.S. government, turning out well over 40 million garments for the Army, Navy, and Marines, an effort that earned them the coveted E for Excellence Award for never missing a shipment or having defects. The company had more than 17 acres of production space under roof in Winston-Salem in 1938 with four plants and was on the state's honor roll for sanitation and good working conditions. However, the demand for the product by civilians after the war led to Huber expanding by having plants built in Sparta and Jefferson, North Carolina and Galax, Virginia. When P. Huber Haynes Sr. retired in 1954, his son P. Huber Haynes Jr. became the third generation to run the company. After his first full year, they recorded a 21% increase in sales, the best in the company's history. In 1963, sales were in excess of $45 million, almost twice what it had been in 1950, and it continued to grow with plants being built in Texas and New Mexico. Huber Haynes Jr., an accomplished athlete, also contributed to the culture of the company through the creation of a company recreation program. It included golfing, fishing, bowling, square dances, rodeos, big barbecues, and picnics. The company was expanding its culture from the walls of its massive brick buildings into the leisure time of its 9,200 employees, and all of it was being documented by the in-house magazine, The Haynes Knitter. Successive years under Huber Jr. saw growth, including a plant being built in Davie County and an eventual merger with Haynes Hosiery Mills to create the Haynes Corporation. Rosalie is pleased with seeing the story captured in the marker. The three generations of Haynes men who ran the business uh, ran it with an open hand and not an iron fist. And that's a legacy that the community can be proud of, of civic and industrial largesse, and we are too. So we're glad that a little bit of the story is now being told. 
Historic markers tell the story of how a piece of property was once used and its impact. This one on 6th Street between Main and Church Streets stands where almost 120 years ago you could likely smell tobacco in the air, see men and women emerging from the brick buildings with cotton dust in their hair, making a product that was needed then and now all over the world. And still today, if you see this marker, you can look up and see the remaining portion of one of the smokestacks of P.H. Haynes Knitting Company, or a converted factory building, now apartments, still sporting the H for Haynes. For the city of Winston-Salem, I'm Ed McNeil.